Now we are in the uh, new building of the Tadikov Gallery looking at the 20th century art. We want to have a dialogue with that art and we think that would be a nice idea to talk about a few of the pictures. Maybe 20 minutes and then we'll break and have another 20 minutes because art is consuming a lot of energy. And the first thing to do would be to look at the Russian Revolution in 1917. And the man who did a good thing about that, a story, a narrative, is Petrov Vodkin. Let us have a look at what he did with uh, St. Petersburg. We are now looking at, uh, it is important when the picture was painted. This painted, this thing, this is called 1918 in St. Petersburg, and it was done in 1920. So that's a very important historical document because in the 20s with great inflation, it was very uh, historically recorded event. Now, the amazing thing is the Madonna, or the proletarian Madonna with a child. So in, in a way, we could say that that was a new generation that for which revolution was then. Maybe that had to reap the fruits of uh, whatever was there. Maybe Nikita Khrushchev would say that this generation would live under communism, uh, which had to start in 1980. But before this happened, we had a sort of an attack between the old regime and the new regime. Look at these uh, windows. You see, they are cracked. They are broken. And there is no glass to replace them. Uh, then there are some groups, there are papers on the walls. And you see these papers? These are the decrees of the Soviet power. Uh, they had to type it on Remington uh, machines uh, for a long while, and then people are reading these decrees, but not in big crowds. They can group only four or five people. The only big group here is guarded by a semi-military person, and if you look at the faces at the hats and the uh, looks of these people, they are the bourgeoisie. Mm. Now, they are summoned to do the labor work because the city is not clean. Nobody does the social work. So the old uh, aristocracy had to do floor sweeping for a while. So horrible. Horrible. <laughs> no, but they also had to feed themselves. And the markets are closed. The shops are not working. Eh? Uh, so if you want to buy some food, like this lady, she bought some food for her son, for her children, for her family, and she gets into this uh, palace-like looking house. And that this lady is buying something. And who is he buy she buying from? What do you think about this girl in white? Where does she come? Is she uh, uh, an urban dweller? What, what do you think, Nika? Or is she from a village? What about she this lady? Traditionally These are traditionally closed girls with sacks. These sacks contain food. So they brought food from the village to exchange this, because money is not working, for jewelry, for gold, whatever they have, not for paper notes. Mm. And she's buying an egg or two or a piece of loaf for an emerald ring. Mm. Now, uh, this is going to have a cup of milk, and this is having some, uh, some food in his hands. So that is the situation. The situation is very dire. Mm. But at, at the same time, the face of the Madonna is quite different. So there is a glimpse of hope, and these are the favorite Petrovodkin's colors, iconoclastic colors, red, green, and blue. And the face, you see, it's not the face, it's like the icon face. She is very suntanned, yeah? Mm -hmm. But her eyes are serene. It's amazing. I think it's a very nice piece of art. When was, it, when was it done? It was done in 1920. Oh, right. So it, nearly, after. nearly, yeah, just after the event. So he remembered all that. Was so the Civil War already over in those days? No, the Civil War is, was still on. And okay, there were large territories that... Petersburg are in exactly. In the very east. In the very east, in Crimea. Crimea was still uh, uncaptured mm -hmm. in 1920. So it ended in 1921. So there was one year to go. Well... That's, that's all about this thing. Now, if you come a few years before that, we'll see this amazing picture. Uh, and it's amazing because Petrov Vodkin, who is the same artist, uh, it's called The Basing of the Red Horse, and it was done in 1912, two years before the First World War, mm -hmm. which is an important landmark in the 20th century art, at least in the early century. 
And in the, well, why the, the horse is red? Nobody could understand this until the war started. And then he said, ah, I am a visionary. I predicted that this red horse of uh, mass <laughs> massacre will happen. And these very nice boys would be the gun meat and they will perish in, in the war. Uh, in fact, the idea behind this red horse was that uh, sun ba uh, basing the horses at dawn, when the first sun, uh, rays of the sun were coming up, uh, would turn the white horses look pink. And he did it. So it, it, it means that it is dawn. And then he tried to intensify this pink, and it turned uh, into purple, red, and then the eye of the horse. Let us look at the eye. Посмотрим на глаз этого. The eye of this horse is very, very vicious, or more than that, крупным планом. But again, if you look at the face of the boy, it's serene. There are no uh, huge impressions. He is reflecting, he is looking inside himself. At least he predicts the future. Maybe we will do this, I don't know, trying to envision what future is uh, facing us when we Look at such Syrian face. He is not actually uh, exercising the effort. He is simply reflecting. He, it is a sort of philosophical thing. Uh, Petro Vodkin, well, we speak about the ladies. Mm. It's an interesting story about this guy. If we turn and look at that picture, посмотрим на эту женщину, покажите нам эту женщину. That is Petro Vodkin's wife, this lady in pink. And for 25 years, they didn't have any children. They wanted to have a child, but alas. And in many of his pictures, like this one, which is also iconoclastic because the figure of this uh, girl, it looks like an icon completely. Mm -hmm. It's a clear cut re reflections to the modern art from the ancient Byzantine style mm -hmm. in the colors, in the uh, composition, in the figures. So in all his pictures, he wanted to describe a child. And uh, then, by miracle, when they were already in the old age, they got a girl. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, so if we can come a little bit to uh, this picture uh, and have yeah, a look. Any emotions on their faces? Uh, this, this She's got it like a little bit, but most of them, they're very... Yeah, uh, they are impassionate, indifferent, yeah. indifferent maybe. Now, uh, he was a guy who also made a contribution to the world of art by inventing this spheric perspective. When you look at this picture, you see that uh, it is Nob Hill uh, on the very top uh, location. The sky is very narrow, and then there are long expanses of Eurasian plains of uh, Russia that has no borders, no borderline. Mm. It had an impact on our national character, by the way. Mm. If, uh, we would have uh, the distance between cities like you have in uh, Dusseldorf and Bochum. Mm. Maybe our behavior would be a little bit different after a few centuries of religious wars and learning to respect the others. Uh, but when you have such expenses, you are free like a bird to fly wherever you want. Uh, you don't need to obey the regulations. Now, a village. So, a bird's eye. And this distorts a little bit the lines of the pictures. So. It is not visible on this one, but he made a small bend, about seven degrees to the left, and this, like this, a bird's view. So, not like a Vitruvian perspective, where all lines merge there, or not like a conic perspective, where all lines merge here, but a little bit twisted, this spheric perspective. Now, shall we come to see r real love, or something that resembles yes, love? Love is, yeah, let, yeah, love is always <laughs> amazing. Now, let us look at the man whose name is Nathan Altman, and that is his face, and we see this person. This is a self-portrait of the guy, done in 1916, and it's called The Head of a Young Jew. It's uh, the First World War is in full swing, and he makes his own, apparently he wasn't at the front line, but he had a sense of beauty, and he tried to reflect this sense of beauty. How he would do that? He would paint a woman. Now, we will first uh, look at the woman that paint, was painted by Petro Vodkin. 
And then look at the woman painted by uh, Nathan Altman. You see these lines of distortion that I've been speaking about. Seven degrees like this and a little bit down from here, right? Oh, yes. And then the face is a very, a, a, a enlarged because the whole attention is on the face. You, she, she poses in front of you, but the impression is that you stand above her. You look from the ceiling on, on this lady. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, windowsill, or this is a chimney uh, fire thing, a mirror, a mirror which yes. reflects several of the pictures. And there is another one there. Somebody is playing a guitar. Посмотрим на эту гитару. And again, the face, uh, the Very face. Uh, unhappy and, and but empty. But she's, she's pondering at something. She's looking at you. But she's, she, I don't know what she expects from the viewer, what she expects from us. Is that a dialogue between, her, between the model and the viewer? I don't know. And it is done in 1925. It's an important figure, 1925. It is done in Soviet Russia in 1925. So there is not too much things to be happy about. And we'll look at the picture by Luchishkin done in next year, 1926, in a few minutes. And then we'll understand why you guess she was yes. not that happy. But before that, happiness is always with us. Let's look at the lady that he admired and he wanted to paint. This is Madame Degas. She is not the daughter of this famous French painter Degas. No, she is that. This thing is done in 1927, and it's Irina Degas. Yeah, that's done by this guy. That's again Nathan Altman. Now he is not in bronze. Uh, he's having flowers, but quite recognizable. And what he does with this? picture. Amazing. Look at the eyes. You've seen that the eyes of that l lady were empty, right, Nico? Yes. What about the eyes of this lady? Are they empty? What do you think? Uh, is she challenging you? Or him, rather say. <laughs> what? Uh, she could Chris. Be both. She, I would say she's, she first could be reflecting on herself, uh -huh. but in a more, more positive way than that girl was. Yeah. Um, and the other possibility, and maybe it's a bit of both, is that she's tempting. She's, she's challenging him for, and for challenge attention. She, she looks like she, she, tri she tries to imply that she's really not interested, but she's... She is. She's after him. Yeah. Ah, good. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> and apart from that, I, th I, I would suspect that she's also challenging the status quo where male order is reigning over the world. It, it, she's on her own. She doesn't want to depend on anybody. Mm. She doesn't want to get uh, the iron wall of marriage behind her back. Mm. She can do everything herself. And he sees that. This mm. guy sees that. And he's a little bit of envious. So he tries to play with textures. Uh, apart from the psychology, her haircut is boyish. Mm. She doesn't keep the feminine color. She is rather and bold, short. yeah, and short, and she is rather bold to remove her bra. Mm -hmm. Speaking about ladies, uh, in 1927, huh? and then there is an amazing thing with these textures, apart from the face. If we could приблизим вот сюда вот на эту текстуру посмотреть, как сделана ее кофточка. Her blouse is done by printing. It is not painted with a brush. Mm. Look. There is, uh, yes. you see, the, there is a texture here of, of the quality of material. Mm -hmm. And he wants to contrast this technicality against the flesh of her, well, not very puffy breasts, but at least seductive. And at the same time, you see, the boy is a little bit vicious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the guy who admired this lady, and we are now admi admiring them both. But it uh, seems to be a very different um, um, manner of painting. Yes. Absolutely, he changed this manner of painting. That uh, was 20, and no, that was 1912. Uh, oh, so okay, that was, was early. And this was in 20, 1927. Sorry. So it is 15 years later. Mm -hmm. His style has changed, and he became a little bit more mature. Mm -hmm. Maybe he learned something about uh, life. At least I look at these scratches. Hopefully and I mean, this, this girl isn't 16 years. anymore. You see. Yes. She isn't 16 anymore. She isn't 16 anymore. He isn't uh, young anymore, too. But at least the artist was a male. And there is a little bit of aggression, of viciousness, because he took his fingernails, 
he, he wouldn't scratch her, but he would scratch the background near her, like here and here. And that's amazing. Uh, well, there are other artists, of course, but shall we st still stick on the theme of ladies? You see those ladies by the Vasiliev Shukhaev? I guess we should have a look. You think so? <laughs> <laughs> we want to see these two ladies. Reincarnation of um, uh, Italian Baroque. <laughs> I don't know what type of Baroque is it, but maybe you're right. The goat at least is there. So <laughs> it is bestiarian. Now, this is 1920. Now, this guy went into exile with uh, another uh, pal of his, Yakovlev. And then after the Second World War, he came from Germany to Soviet Russia. Luckily, he was not put in Gulag, but he was banned from painting in Moscow and St. Petersburg. So the place where he could stay was uh, Tbilisi, because it was outside the in main Georgia. cities. In Georgia, exactly. And he made some wonderful portraits there. Maybe we'll see them later. But at least his taste for the life is, is quite different from that of uh, that lady. 